Hey everyone, chaos this week in America with videos of a brawl and a takeover at the Capitol building that were both exciting, yet also quite dull in some respects because normally when you see that sort of stuff happening on TV, someone like Steven Seagal's about to show up, or maybe Michael Bay is filming it so for whatever reason stones are suddenly flammable because physics in his world makes about as much sense as the concepts of integrity or decency in the world of Washington DC. As to the violence and bloodshed, the main news story for me has more been the fact that all these supposed Trump-supporting right-wing extremists have all been identified as hard-left activists who are maybe paid to show up and undermine the president's TV reputation even further, or perhaps they just like to go to smash things up and cause trouble. One of them was in Philadelphia a couple months ago at a Black Lives Matter protest, leading it by smashing up the Apple store. Who knows, maybe he thought that the Senate had some stuff in it worth stealing. To be honest, the scenes did remind me a bit of those clips where you see a crowd running amok inside a Walmart, or maybe walking out of a Target branch with a 60 inch television. Unfortunately, the only things for sale in the Senate though were the politicians and they'd long since departed. But generally speaking, for all the talk of paid actors and protesters, I'm still inclined to think that they're more like the sort of England football fans that used to go abroad in order to get into a fist fight and smash up the local taverna. You know, the sort of idiots that heard Churchill talking about fighting them on the beaches and took that as an instruction to travel to the World Cup and get arrested. Nonetheless, there does seem to be a sense, by some at least, that in two weeks this is all going to be over and the country will return to normal, or at least a definition of normal that includes being the sort of place where you can ask for a sandwich and tell the server to substitute the bread for two pieces of fried chicken. However, this all seems wildly misplaced optimism on behalf of the left, but wasn't it always so? You know, if this election was indeed what they claim it was, then the best option would have been to have an inquiry, answer the questions, show that the result was beyond any doubt, and prove to the world that Mr Trump was, at the end of the day, a somewhat shifty businessman who'd lost an election. Instead, all lines of question have been shut down, people have been silenced, livelihoods threatened for daring to ask what in some cases are very legitimate questions. Things like, why are there videos of boxes being brought into the room after the observers have finished up for the day? Why was the account trusted to a company that was donating millions of dollars to one of the two parties involved? Apparently you're dangerous or racist though, if you don't just accept everything you're being told, and those lines of questions have thus been shut down faster than Jamie Oliver restaurants or branches of Kmart, depending on what side of the pond you want your analogy from. The end result of all this censorship and the media blackout is that Donald Trump is being actively transformed into not a failure but a martyred man of the people, like some kind of right-wing Bobby Kennedy. The one thing you think people would probably learn by now is that if you want to stop a conspiracy theory, the very last thing you want to do is ban people from mentioning it. That's about as effective as trying to shovel mercury with a pitchfork. Thus, in 20 or 50 years, a solid chunk of the population will probably still mention that time when the media and the state had no option but to rig an election because it was the only conceivable way they could defeat Donald Trump because he was just too darned popular to defeat by any other means. And for the record, though, I'd probably side with that theory. If only just because, like I said, the media have been so suspiciously keen to shut down and ridicule the debate that there's probably something to it. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, like, subscribe.